Good morning, everyone. We will be starting presently. Thank you so much for coming so early on the last day to our session, um, Synthesis Document, a collective output shaping the future of NRIs, um, the future of IGF and NRIs and experience for the Asia Pacific Regional IGF. Uh, my name is Jennifer Chung. I'm part of the Secretariat team for the APR IGF. And a quick uh, introduction um, of the, they're not really panelists, they would be discussants of a round table. Hopefully everybody will be very willing and uh, participate in this discussion. Um, to my right here is Paul Wilson. He's the head of APNIC, the Asia Pacific Network Information Center. Um, next to him we have Winston Roberts, representing the International Federation of Library Associations, IFLA. And next to Winston we have Maureen Hilliard, um, she is the APRL Vice Chair and also the representative at ALAC um, at ICANN. Um, next to Maureen, we have Chad Garcia Ramillo. Um, she is the Executive Director at APC. And at the end there, we have Gian Soriano. Um, she is the Net Mission Ambassador and also the YIGF, the Youth IGF Organizer. So without further ado, we can start. Um, you see on the screen really quickly, this is a pretty um, straightforward uh, session. We really have a, just a small introduction. We really want to keep most of the time in interactive discussion, roundtable with everyone here. Um, and I would like to pass to Paul to talk a little bit about the introduction. Good, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Paul from uh, Paul Wilson from APNIC. Uh, we're the IP address registry for Asia Pacific. We've been involved with the IGF process since before it started. 
um, and with the APR IGF since it started, uh, and we've just had the last, the eighth uh, APR IGF. So for the last um, for the last eight years, we've been uh, we've been gathering at different places in the in the region uh, for a regional IGF initiative. Uh, I spent some years as the as the chair of the multi-stakeholder steering group, which is the e equivalent of the IGF uh, MAG. Uh, we felt uh, back in the early days that we weren't exactly advising anyone in particular. The MAG in the IGF context advises the, the UN. Uh, in, our, in the case of our regional initiative, uh, we chose uh, MSG for multi-stakeholder steering group. So that's a, that's a, a group uh, as a, a feature of the APR IGF. The, the MSG is a very open steering group. Uh, it has uh, many participants, uh, some more active than others, but uh, anyone who is, uh, who is interested to contribute or participate in, in steering and guiding and developing the APR IGF is, uh, is welcome to join the, uh, the multi-stakeholder uh, steering group. Um, the origins of the APR IGF, uh, well, I have to acknowledge the continuous support of the Dot Asia organisation who have been with us uh, for the entire time and has contributed uh, hugely to to the success, the ongoing success of the um, of the APR IGF, both as participants in the in the process, but also um, supporting it as as a secretariat. And uh, at um, at uh, APNIC, we've we've always seen IGF as an important uh, process, and so the the regional IGF is a way for Asia Pacific Voices, which had been fairly. Um, much in the minority uh, during the, the early days of the IGF, we see it as, as a very important way for the Asia Pacific voices to come out and to be heard and to, uh, to, uh, to have people um, contributing in IGF, uh, the IGF process as, as was always in, intended. And I, I think we've been, um, we've been successful in that. I think also uh, we can take uh, some pride in some of the innovations that uh, have happened at the APR IGF. Um, this, uh, this MSG process, I think, is, is very open and, and accessible to those who want to, who want to contribute. Um, I'd also give credit to the Net Mission people for the fact that we've had a really vibrant and successful youth IGF uh, process for the entire eight years of the APR IGF. So Net Mission and Dot Asia have been really critical in, uh, again, in bringing a, a very um, wide range of, of youth participants to, um, into the regional IGF. And the other uh, innovation, the one that we're here to talk about, is, um, is our process for outcomes. So uh, we have been for the last few years producing what's referred to as a synthesis document, which is a consensus uh, document produced by the community in a, in a very inclusive process, which then becomes, once it's, once it's been ag agreed, uh, once it has a kind of a, a rough consensus, I guess, it, it becomes an output uh, of the APR IGF as a synthesis of what's, uh, what's happened. And that started, uh, that, that process started in Delhi in the fifth AP regional IGF, where just in the closing session, we had some quite strong comments that came from civil society. And I have to say that in the earlier days of, of APR IGF, we didn't have a great uh, civil society participation. Uh, the the uh, APR IGF was largely an, an initiative of the of the technical community, and it took a little while for civil society to come <coughs> along. But the initiative that we heard in Delhi was was a request for this um, this conference for the this IGF forum to to produce something more as an as an outcome, and um, that was something that was pretty well uh, discussed in the in the session. Uh, in spite of the fact that it's a bit of a controversial and, and a, a bit of a, a um, divisive issue, actually, the, the question of whether or not these events should produce outcomes uh, at all. But we actually had quite a, an easy consensus that we should explore this. And then uh, in Macau, in the sixth, uh, in the sixth event, uh, we actually did convene a process which was pretty informal. Again, very inc inclusive and a sort of ad hoc process. And, um, that produced the first output document or synthesis document, and that's uh, now been repeated twice. And we have um, have a more formalized uh, process, still very inclusive, but um, one of the things that we do, again, thanks to the, the Secretariat, is, a, is an online collaborative document development process, which I think is actually a very effective uh, platform for people to be heard and, and to do the, the detailed work of producing, producing the document. So I'd like to uh, I'd like to say thanks to the civil society participants, um, particularly some from the APC Association for Progressive Communication, for um, for sort of catalyzing that the development, um, the instigation of the the output um, 
synthesis document process. Uh, and it's very good to see actually that in the last, uh, the three succeeding um, events, we've had really a, a much broader, um, more inclusive participation in APR IGF and, uh, and I think these things all go, to, go together. Anyway, I've, I've probably said enough about the background uh, to, the, to the document. I really, I really hope that it's a, an interesting um, uh, input into the, uh, into the IGF this year. Back to you, Jennifer. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Paul, for the background introduction. Um, now we turn to Maureen to talk a little bit about um, the drafting committee. Um, she is actually the chair of the drafting committee this year, so thank you, Maureen. Uh, thank you, Jen. <clears throat> um, my role as the uh, chair of the drafting committee, of course, is just coordinating um, the inputs and um, in um, consultation with the MSG and the um, Asia Pacific community that is part of our um, of our organisation, um, it's really you know to um, the final result is of course uh, the document that you have. Um, well, many of you they, have they got the link for this? They have, haven't they? Oh, okay. Well, that's great. Thank you. Um, I think um, in I'm just sort of like uh, recounting the um, process that we um, developed um, in the 2017 um, version. Um, around about uh, the APR IGF was held in July, and um, about this time last year, we were actually, uh, just as we are doing this year, looking at the overarching theme and the sub-themes which would um, which are decided on by the program committee. So there's a coordination between the different um, committees that are actually um, part and parcel of the APR IGF. And in consultation with the multi-stakeholder um, community, um, the overarching themes and the sub-themes were developed. And um, using these themes and sub-themes, which will come up um, later and you'll read them in the document, Using these themes and sub-themes, a skeleton of what was to be developed into the synthesis document went online. And at the end, um, and um, they basically introduced, introduced the, um, the context of, our, um, of, our, of the upcoming um, uh, IGF and, its, and, its, and some potential for um, upcoming work, workshop proposals that people might want to um, build around and also in case they wanted to start making comments online on the online document. Um, when it came to the actual event um, itself, you know, eight months down the track, um, what we actually did was we held town hall sessions at the end of the first two days. And these town hall sessions were basically open mic sessions uh, where people could come um, could come up and they could actually sort of um, uh, discuss, um, raise any concerns, any issues that may have um, come out of the workshops they'd attended or um, corridor discussions that they'd had, anything that they wanted to raise that would that um, uh, within the um, context of the um, of the event itself. Anyway, these town hall sessions were actually co-chaired by myself and my colleague, Chad. And um, we were really um, thrilled with the, um, with the interaction with the, um, with the audience because it was their, it was their, um, um, it was their session and it was their opportunity to have input into what has resulted in the synthesis document. And at the same time, we were encouraging people to um, put comments online. Um, so if anyone gave a presentation, we sort of like encouraged them to put, summarise those comments and put them online. And they added to the, um, th to the context of what we were going to develop. Um, as Paul said, this, is the th this year's um, 2017 was the third um, synthesis document um, that has come out of the um, APR IGF. Um, and um, I think that the discussions that we had this year were um, demonstrated an important facet of the document in that the, it is the community that dictates um, its contents. Um, during the town hall um, discussions that we had this year um, in Bangkok, it was raised and supported by the um, community that was there that capacity building, which was not given any particular uh, sort of like um, 
uh, sort of like section of its own because it sort of like underpinned <coughs> quite a few of our workshops and, and our <coughs> discussion topics. But they felt that the capacity building should actually be a theme on its own. And so because of, you know, because of the importance to our region. And so sub subsequently, by consensus, um, this new theme was added into, um, into the document. Um, after the event, uh, the drafting committee reconvened, but what we did this time is that we, um, we assigned um, uh, uh, groups of volunteers to each of the themes, and what they did was they synthesised the inputs that had come from the workshops, from the comments, um, community comments, and from both, you know, like uh, from the, from the um, online comments that were made, and um, constructed a, um, a statement. And this statement was sort of like um, discussed with the, the, the um, drafting committee itself, but also in consultation with the, um, the community uh, through, as Paul said, through the online um, uh, email communications that we had. Um, and once these uh, the statements had actually sort of like been um, completed um, and had been endorsed by the MSG, then they were all bundled up and given to, to Jennifer, who um, is our principal, um, uh, she's, our, she's our principal sort of like wordsmith and editor and um, she, she, you know, does an amazing, amazing job with it and she's, uh, she has been instrumental in producing the document that we've um, ended up with. Thank you. Um, <coughs> Thank you so much, Maureen, um, and also thank you for that. It's really a drafting team uh, and community effort throughout. Um, so kind of building on what Maureen said, um, she did mention the sub-themes, which are based on the sub-themes that are decided by the programming committee of the APRGF. You can see very quickly here, there's a little breakdown of where the comments are coming from. Um, the, the five sub, actually the four sub-themes that we had, cybersecurity, um, access, empowerment, and diversity, uh, human rights and the internet, and the digital economy and en enabling innovation. Um, they were the four sub-themes that were previously thought of to en um, <coughs> encompass the, the meeting, but as Maureen did highlight and pick out, a lot of the participants and commenters uh, felt that capacity building should be given its own section, so that does appear in the final document. Um, here we have a little look at exactly the mechanics of how people were commenting. Um, it is um, an open and online commenting platform. People were um, able to comment on each specific paragraph. Um, you see on the link there, oh, apologies for a small typo there. Um, you see on the links over there, it, there's the commenting platform, which is comment.rigf.asia, and also the archives of the three previous synthesis documents, and that's also available over there. Okay, and a, another quick uh, look at the synthesis documents by the numbers. Um, as Paul mentioned earlier in the introduction, we've had the synthesis document now for three years. We did start in Macau in 2015, uh, then in Taipei, and then in Bangkok. And you can see that uh, people have been warming up to it. We've received uh, 74 comments back in, uh, in the Macau meeting. Uh, throughout all three drafts, and by the time we got to Bangkok, we already received um, 261 comments throughout the entire synthesis document process. We've already um, also added two seminars, uh, two webinars, excuse me, uh, this year because we've had feedback from participants um, at the uh, both online and also at the meeting that they would really wanted some uh, information on how to participate, how to better participate in the process. So the webinars were scheduled before each public comment period, so people commenting would understand what they're commenting on and how their comments will then be synthesized. Um, yeah. The small and yes. So um, apologies for the small slide um, reorganization. Um, now I'd like to open it up really for the roundtable discussion. We have three topics here. Um, the first is value and objectives um, of such an output document. Um, the second would be the process and logistical challenges, 
and the third one is the applicability of the experience for both the global IGF and other um, national regional initiatives. So perhaps I could call upon people up here who are not really panelists, but discussants to really start off the discussion with the first one. Maybe Winston, you'd like to take a stab at the very first one. Thanks, Jennifer. Okay, um, you've probably been wondering what I'm doing here because I'm not um, in the same category as Paul and Maureen, for example. I'm not one of the um, long-standing authoritative um, sort of leaders of this process and this community, and uh, I'm not closely involved in the um, the, the MSG, although I'm sort of attached to it and I'm in the drafting committee. But my particular interest in this, in the regional meeting, is because going a long way back, I was actually, uh, I'm not, I'm here as an NGO representative, but I, going a way back to 2003, I was a New Zealand government official at the World Summit and I was closely involved in negotiating the action lines in Geneva. And then also I was at the Second World Summit in Tunis in 2005, where, from which uh, the outcomes document uh, arose, came out, uh, and that is in fact the, the document that gave legitimacy, that established the um, Internet Governance Forum or the Internet Governance Process. So. My interest is going back to those days, 15 years ago nearly, um, I'm interested to see what has come out of it in the sense of um, understanding and tracking actions, tracking the development of themes, tracking the, um, the impact that some of these discussions and themes have had on our particular region, or, or I haven't really had the ambition to follow it around the whole world, but um, I am interested in, in the effect that these themes have had, uh, these action lines have had on our region and the Asia Pacific, which is in fact half the planet. Um, although I'm here, um, but I haven't been able to follow those in, in New Zealand government terms, so uh, that role finished. But I have since then maintained a role as uh, a civil society uh, member. I'm a member of the International Federation of Library Associations, and we are um, a, a, a the global peak body in in the library and information services sector, and we have you know official recognised status with the UN system. So I'm here really as a regional member of IFLA for this uh, following this these processes in the region, and. Wearing that NGO hat, I have been, since the regional meeting in Korea in 2013, I've been organising, convening uh, workshops at each regional um, I IGF, except for Delhi when I couldn't go, but uh, every regional meeting, 13 uh, in, in Korea and then uh, Macau and then uh, Taiwan and then uh, Bangkok this year. Uh, workshops on access to information and obviously um, the particular line of attack that we have taken in our workshop has been to discuss how we can use the um, the internet how we can use a strong neutral well-governed honest reliable trustworthy internet service as a platform for providing community-based information services for purposes of education and um, development of uh, community solidarity and, and information for all the other purposes that you can imagine information is for. And um, the greatest of these, of course, is education, because education is, in fact, the basis of everything. So my particular interest in this document is as an activist, you might say, for organising these workshops 
as um, uh, currently employed as a policy person in the government in the region, and from that point of view, trying to follow the impact of the IGF and these themes in, in um, information services throughout the region. And I also feel that because, well, I, I'm convinced that because we uh, are all involved representing different organisations, we have to report back to the organisations who support our participation, and we have to tell them what we're doing and why it's having a positive impact. We have to be accountable, and accountability is one reason for the synthesis document. Um, a second point, of course, is that, um, as others have mentioned, um, there's a strong feeling in the region that we need to, the phrase I use is to cascade upwards, to, to send messages up from the region up to the higher level global body, um, which we believe can help the global body um, develop its work more successfully and messages to the ITU, in fact. Uh, that's enough from me for the moment. I, I've got other things I'd like to say maybe later, but we can. I don't want to hog the microphone, so Jennifer. Thank you so much, Winston, for that. Um, I guess this is really an open session, so anybody from the floor, if you have something <coughs> to ask, something to say, please do raise your hand, and we will, do, we will definitely um, give you the floor to, to speak. Um, we're, we're really not panelists up here. Um, I guess really talking more about uh, maybe values and objectives, anybody else from the up here, I don't really want to call us the panel, want to say a few words. Yeah, hi, good morning. Look, I, th I think what, what's useful really about, in just in terms of the value of the outcome document is that, you know, the, then the process doesn't end after the, the forum itself. There, you provide a process where uh, participants, stakeholders still continue to talk about the issues. I think that's one. Um, from, from, our, from our part, I mean, there, there are parts of the, the, the um, document that we're interested in. So for example, human rights. So our process, just so that, so it's sort of like, um, see how we input into the, into the discussion is that we ourselves, and we are a community as well, we have members, et cetera, who participate in the, in the um, uh, forum is that we we then discuss and say okay these are the issues that we're looking at and this is this, these are the kinds of um, um, conclusions that we want to be in to be into in uh, uh, in the outcome document I think that's important because it does provide a process it provides a process that continues even after the forum so it, it's a bit like I guess the intercessional if you like you know you're providing that forum. In it. I also think that it is about discussion. It's about us within the region sort of understanding each other and, and really um, coming together around quite high level values. And you'll see if you look at the, diff the three diff different documents, the themes are quite similar and then we're also adding on themes that, we f that are, are important. So I think that's, in, that's quite useful. For anyone who's been in um, discussions, you know, negotiation of language, um, it, it, it is a difficult thing. It's not. It's not an easy thing. But I think the process that we have in in, in with the outcome document makes it easier, um, less contentious in a way, uh, and more uh, consensus building. So if you leave it at a, you, you have to leave it at a, a certain level, though. Otherwise, you might end up not coming to any conclusion. I think that's uh, that's an, an important point I wanted to, to put in. I, th I think um, that's a, a good point, um, Chad, about the about the inclusivity of the the document process. And I actually, I have to say, uh, from my observations, that particularly in our region, which is highly multilingual, it is so important to have something written, something that people can actually think about for a while, can consult with others about, can can comment on in a, in a in a deliberative deliberative way without being under pressure to be standing at a microphone and, um, and contributing in, re in real time where if you don't have English, uh, you know, frankly, you're at a, at a serious disadvantage, even, even I think in an IGF context with, with brilliant uh, interpretation and so forth. It's, um, it's just uh, a, a much more inclusive and, um, and representative process if, if there's a, a, written, a, a written component.
Um, can I just 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 a uh, short thing? Um, I'm following on from what um, from what Paul and, and and Chad have said too. I think that um, because Asia Pacific is such um, a, a large area, it covers so many different um, uh, sort of like cultures and languages and. And, and also the, the, the diversity of the, you know, we, we were actually sort of like really thrilled with um, how comfortable um, people were to, to, to get up. And um, I think that this is really impo important that this comfort level has actually sort of like added, um, you know, sort of like a, a, a more depth to what it is that we've actually been able to put into this as an output um, of our region too. Thank you. Thank you, Maureen. Um, just a quick reminder for everyone speaking to just state their name first, really for the transcript and for remote participants. Um, I think we have Pablo in the back. Yes, thanks. Um, I mean, I really think that not only for this room, but also for posterity in the transcript and the uh, video record of this discussion, I mean, the important thing is what are the lessons from the APR IGF uh, output document into sort of the IGF process. And I really think there is a lot uh, that uh, the Asia Pacific region in their efforts can um, um, teach even <laughs> sort of the IGF uh, process into this. So I have a couple of uh, questions that I would like to raise. Um, for the purpose of discussion, and, and one has to do with the, the role of the, um, in the case of the APR IGF, the, the MSG, uh, the, the, the multi-stakeholder group uh, that puts together the program, but also leads a lot of the initiatives in, in the APR IGF, and, and perhaps uh, mostly thinking in terms of uh, the, the similarities with the MAG and, and how the MAG can help uh, sort of uh, triggering um, or leading sort of uh, these kind of initiatives um, uh, like in the Asia Pacific region. So, so that, is, that is one. Um, I mean, I understand that in, in the APRIGF, it's not the MSG that works directly in the summary output, but I also think that it's a subgroup of the MSG um, that, that uh, has commitment to develop this, this document. Um, yeah, probably we can start from, from there. Um, this is Jennifer, for the record. Um, thanks, Pablo, for throwing those questions out. And, and just a really quick, um, I guess, clarification regarding the, the role of the drafting committee. It, it's actually open to the entire community um, for participation. So the entire um, Asia Pacific regional IGF community, you don't have to be a member of the MSG to participate. You don't have to be a member you can even join the drafting committee during the discussions, which is actually an interesting thing. I think Maureen did note in, in her introduction that the drafting committee really came as a very ad hoc kind of uh, uh, band of volunteers who at the Macau pilot meeting, they were so interested in the whole process, they wanted to, hey, can we get a room um, during lunch and have a few people and discuss how we can better uh, better this process, make it more robust, make it more open, make it more transparent. So I think we've um, continued that tradition. We, we don't have any restrictions or requirements um, to join or, or any barriers to join the, the drafting committee. So I don't know if anybody else wanted to. Oh, I see. Oh, I've Winston first and then Satish. Okay. Uh, thanks, Jennifer. I absolutely agree that it's a good thing for the drafting committee to be open-ended and inclusive in the broader sense. Um, in, in terms of, say, UN terminology, you could say the drafting committee is everyone in, in the regional process, the IGF process. It's a sort of uh, committee of the whole. Uh, it's, it's 
people taking off their hat as participants in the forum and putting on a hat as online participants in the drafting committee, which starts at the forum, in fact. So we have two functions. And, you know, there is, a, there is great value, obviously, in meeting face-to-face -face because you can, you can spark uh, discussions and do networking there face-to-face. Uh, but it's also important to allow online input, uh, including by ourselves, after the event, because then we have time to th mull things over to think about them and develop uh, maybe improved wording. But also, I, I would like to make the point that w we're not forced to agree on everything all the time, and th the synthesis document is a, it does have a role in maybe identifying issues which are not resolved. We, we can identify uh, issues which are still um, subject to further discussion. We don't have enough information and we can state a provisional position. Uh, we're not absolutely bound forever to agree with something that was in the synthesis document. We might change our mind next time around. Um, Another thing uh, that occurred to me before listening to my colleagues on, on, on the podium, um, the region is, as we've already said, it's vast and it's far-flung and the distances are huge. This may be um, a, an important role for this particular region, which doesn't apply quite so much to, say, Africa and Latin America, certainly doesn't apply in Europe for the European, uh, for Eurodig. Um, it's a way for more people to participate who simply cannot, for geographical and financial reasons, travel so far to the main meetings. The, doc the, the, the written synthesis document is a way of overcoming time and space, even if you can't actually get to the forum. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Winston. Um, Satish, please. Uh, thank you, Jennifer. Uh, Satish, for the transcript. Uh, apologies for uh, landing up late, and apologies if you have already discussed uh, what I'm just about to say. Uh, I see two distinct uh, processes uh, here. One is the process of compiling and finalizing the synthesis document, which to me has been exceedingly well done. It has been very open and very inclusive, and also consensus-based, given the diversity that we have in the region. Uh, that part has been, therefore, uh, in my opinion, done pretty well. Uh, the second process that uh, has to happen is the dissemination of this document, which is distinct from the compilation process. Now, currently, for instance, in ICANN, there is a discussion going on on how to manage communications in diverse settings. And I think uh, Asia-Pacific is as diverse as it gets. And we have to perhaps look uh, the, 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 the knee-jerk response is translation. But we might have to look beyond translation into things like, uh, you know, uh, infographics or subtitle videos, which can be dubbed into other languages, uh, flyers, uh, maybe an executive summary, which can be circulated. Uh, so I think we have to think out of the box as far as the second process of dissemination is concerned. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Satish, for those recommendations. I think that's something that the APRGF community, as well as the drafting committee and the MSG, would be very, very willing to explore. I think making this document accessible to all is something that we really want to do. Um, perhaps we can move on to the second topic here um, on process and logistical challenges. One thing I'd like to point out um, about the Bangkok meeting earlier this year, we made a big effort to push for accessibility at this meeting, and I'm really happy to see uh, one of our APRGF fellows actually in this room here, uh, Vashkar from uh, Bangladesh. Um, he, he actually came up during one of the town hall meetings and, you know, made a point to, to ask us, have you checked that even the online commenting platform and the whole process of the synthesis document is accessible to all, accessible to people with disabilities who may be visually impaired or otherwise, um, to be able to continue to participate fully, as well as people who aren't um, in person as um, 
Winston has mentioned, because the Asia Pacific region is very, very, very big, um, it's the, the logistical challenges of actually traveling in person to be able to, to participate in this process is actually quite high. So um, with that, maybe I could call on Jian to talk a little bit about how the youth uh, felt that how their voices were incorporated in this document. So um, I've been organizing the YGF since Macau, which is also the start of the synthesis document. And uh, generally, uh, from the youth participants that we have, they're actually, they appreciate that um, they're uh, like the drafting committee and like the uh, moderators are encouraging them to give their opinions. Uh, but I think uh, one of the main concerns that they have is the document looks intimidating and they don't know how to approach it or they don't know how to um, give their comments or if their comments are valid because some of them want to have specific comments in specific se sections. And if I can read um, some of the comments is, um, someone wanted to comment something about the right to be forgotten, but um, he said that Uh, he said, so do we have to make this a series of mother statements or do we have to state that uh, this is where we stand or this is not where we stand? And he said, y if you can enlighten me how to approach this document. Mm. So um, yeah, there's this sense of um, them not knowing how to approach it. So uh, what they suggested for us when we introduce a doc to document during our sessions is to give like a guideline or um, maybe give like something specific for them to move on to. And regarding uh, another point is whether there should be a separate section for YGF in the document. Uh, there's like very uh, varying answers. Some of them don't want to feel segregated yeah. to have a separate <coughs> section, but some feel like their comments are lost in the middle, uh, being from a youth perspective. So um, that's also another challenge that we have. And um, another thing is um, because we have se sessions from morning to afternoon, so there's a sense of uh, exhaustion from, from them to also comment. So um, uh, what we were thinking of doing is to uh, have a session before the synthesis document to just get them to give ideas and then maybe one of the um, YGF organizers can speak on behalf if, if it's too much for them to um, comment. So, yeah. Um, thank you so much, um, Jian. Any questions from the floor or comments that you wanted to raise perhaps about, yes, in the back, please. Hi, I'm Jiranut from Thailand. Um, I didn't follow, I didn't attend the uh, Bangkok Asia Pacific IGF. Uh, sorry, I'm somewhere else. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it seems interesting for the, for the document. I, I have two questions. First, uh, what's the, the purpose of document, ultimate goal, ultimate purpose of this document? It will be for the, uh, can apply or for, 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 for what reason exactly at the anti go And uh, I also want to know that during the, the discussion or, uh, of the document, what topic that probably most controversial or have to be like a, the difficult to, to get some compromise or some consensus? Thank you. I'd, I'd just like to, to answer um, from th my experience as having been a member of the IGF MAG, the multi-stakeholder advisory group of the IGF for a few years. And that is that there was a, a general conception of the NRIs, the National and Regional Initiatives, as, as being an opportunity for the proceedings of an IGF to be considered in the following year, for instance, at the national and regional level for people to be able to to talk about what happened here in, in a regional context. And then, then again, for anything 
that comes from the proceedings of those national and regional meetings to then be actu actually able to be reported into the into the IGF. So I think I think that's a, a process of establishing some kind of a, a memory of the uh, and a record of the event. I, I think uh, it was, uh, in my mind at least, and I, and I think it was somewhat shared that the synthesis document from the regional IGF would would actually be on the record. It would be available for reference in the future. Uh, but in particular, from that uh, IGF point of view, to, to actually have some um, have some uh, greater greater richness of of inputs um, to the uh, to the IGF uh, the IGF process. I think um, just one other comment is that um, there's been reservations about the real the reality, uh, the logistical and sort of political uh, challenges of having a an outcome document. Uh, that in the case of disagreements, as, and as you mentioned, there, there will be contentious issues. In the case of disagreements, how do you negotiate the final wording and so forth? And I, th I think, although it's, it's not explicit, I think in my mind the meaning of a synthesis document is to represent what happened without necessarily uh, resolving all of the issues. So I think in, in the case of any serious uh, disagreement, a synthesis document would actually represent both sides. Mm -hmm. And it would uh, then then be on the record and available to be to be addressed again in in future. Thanks. Sorry. <laughs> uh, thank you. I just wanted to um, raise two, and especially in in, um, in light of what Jan's um, actually sort of like raised, we uh, this um, year in particular, we, well, as in other years. There's been a, there we do have a very strong um, focus on the youth. But in hindsight now, um, although we put a lot, there is the, um, they have special programs and, and special sessions and following this, we're actually not recognising it. So this is, thank you. Um, we do need to acknowledge that. And I think that this is part and parcel of that, having um, a record of what it is that we've actually done. We're not actually recording. Um, you know all the all the things that we're actually focusing on. Thank you, Maureen. Um, we actually have a remote question. Uh, this is Yanis uh, from the Secretary and speaking on behalf of uh, Ms. Yinji Chen uh, from Taiwan, which is also an MSG member, actually. Uh, so her question is uh, how to make these suggestions more effective to government or policymakers. Yes, an excellent question, uh, but it's wider than, than that, I think. Um, the question is, what do we do later with the synthesis document, and how do we raise awareness of the existence of the APRIGF in, uh, in, in the general public? I, I think there's a, there's a large communication question how do we um, get our message out there and how do we raise awareness of people in different sectors, decision makers and general public and media and academia of the work of the IGF process and the individual um, achievements of the regional processes? Uh, one way of, I mean, one simple answer would be that, um, to, to quote your, to, to answer your specific question about advising governments, I mean, I suppose people in the ITU should pass down. The, the, the bureaucratic answer would be that the ITU, having been made aware of the results of a regional process and the results of the big IG, the global IGF, would then advise its member states of the of the results. But then that implies uh, that that really means that there would be a very summarised. Um, formal way of advising member states and that response would go to capital cities to government agencies who are in charge of liaison with ITU I think we need to take a more grassroots approach as well and people in the IGF process who are working such as myself who at, who in their day job are working for governments or working for any other body in the process they should make reports and try and push the results gently into the decision-making process. You know, uh, there has to be a sort of top-down process of advising governments, but there needs to be a grassroots, bottom-up approach as well. 
and that's probably something that um, can be picked up later when we get to the third section of the, uh, the third point. Yeah. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'm on a, one of the uh, APRIJ fellow when I was in Bangkok, and very pleasing to see um, that uh, these uh, synthesis documents are becoming more inclusive than before, and and that's said that without us, nothing about us. So we, we are very pleased that it is considering the disability issues uh, in this uh, document. But my um, recommendation will be or questions like, you know, in our reason, we are seeing that governments are becoming more um, uh, e-governments. They are promoting the e-governments. So now is the high time to make the, um, uh, so bring this IG issue uh, in our reason to the government. Because if government, um, from our government, I'm really seeking um, collaboration on behalf of Access to Information Program, Prime Minister, Office of Bangladesh, that how you could assist us to make our e-service and WAVE more accessible and inclusive for all. Because I am one of the responsible person to make it happen. So even uh, um, ITU can become uh, forward or any other international agency who have the knowledge. We need the knowledge and expertise to make it happen. And we want to make Digital Bangladesh, a inclusive Bangladesh. Thank you. Thank you, Vashkar. Um, Chat, did you want to add to that? So this is this is Chat for for the transcript. Um, I think it's a. What I wanted to strengthen that point from Vashkar. Um, I think aside from you know this going upwards to global IGF, uh, ITU, etc. I think the synthesis document can be very useful actually for national, um, for our work in countries, because then you have something that you look at to sort of draw from, um, as you're saying, you know, to, to be much more inclusive, to pick up on some of those um, issues, um, um, principles that are in the, in the, um, synthesis document that can be useful for countries. So you, you could say there's this consensus here and this is something that's quite really important for the region. So I think it can be useful for national um, advocacy as well. Thank you so much, Chad. I think we're kind of competing with them, some rolling thunder up there, but um, Amrita, please. Thank you. Um, as mentioned, the the dissemination of the information of the synthesis document is very important. Perhaps um, it can be explored that the national IGFs could have a small session wherein the synthesis document is discussed because local community would be there. It's also a way to spread the news. Thank you, Amrita. I think that actually is a very, very good point that actually echoes what Vashkar did say. If um, at the regional level there is a document that's being discussed, bringing it back to the national level really does help push uh, um, national initiatives and, and the push towards the national government to actually listen to these processes. That also kind of comes back to what Satish mentioned and suggested earlier about the dissemination of this document. We need to be cognizant of who the audience is going to be. If we're going to create infographics and, and messages like that through social media and other channels, uh, who are we targeting? And if we're trying to then affect the policy, uh, uh, what is the target audience there for the census document? And I think that's something we can definitely think about. Paul, please. I think, it's a, I think that's a very good suggestion as well. But I just, just one caution is that um, this is a, it's a process that can't be rushed. It's a process that can't be kind of wedged into an agenda at the last minute uh, for the sake of producing an outcome. I think the risk of, uh, of being seen to be trying for of any members of the community being try, trying to force or produce a result that isn't representative is really very high. And so uh, it was very important in the APRIGF that, the, that we had the town hall sessions each day of the event in the evening that really required some commitment on the part of people who were there, but it, it showed that commitment with, by, with the numbers who were, who were prepared to be involved. Uh, so that was a deliberative, very open deliberative process. And then, of course, the online uh, editing and, and refinement that went on for quite some period afterwards was inclusive. So, so again, uh, if it's to be taken on, then it's something to be uh, taken on very, very carefully and deliberatively for the sake of legitimacy. 
Thanks. Uh, yes, Winston, uh, for the uh, for the record. There, um, I would just like to comment on the the question of flow on of information from from the synthesis document. Um, I mentioned before that it's useful to sort of have have this to use this document to cascade information upwards to the the higher level bodies. At, it's difficult to sort of reverse the process and sort of cascade it down at the same time to the national uh, processes. Um, it's a little bit contradictory because the, the synthesis is obviously a synthesis of national inputs into the regional meeting and then regional input up to the global meeting. Um, I think that the synthesis document of each regional meeting has to be to some extent regarded as uh, a collection of ideas coming out of the wisdom of the national representatives who go to the meeting. And if there's some debate about ideas um, in, the, in professional communities, uh, in, in individual countries, then probably those should be picked up at the following year's regional meeting and then put into the mix. I don't think you can sort of um, take the, the synthesis document as a as a pedagogical tool. It's it's a statement of a position at a certain time in the year after the regional meeting, uh, but it's not necessarily fixed forever. And as we've already said, it doesn't always have to res to present a completely resolved uh, statement of uh, some issues. There, could, there, there can be issues which are deliberately left um, unresolved. <coughs> Excuse me. And one of those is um, has already been mentioned by Jihan um, a few minutes ago. Uh, she referred to a discussion about the right to be forgotten. Uh, that was um, a, a, a question which came up in the meeting in Taiwan in 2015. 2016, and the question was, the right to be forgotten was something that came out of a judgment in a European court, and it referred to um, the lawyers among, the, uh, among you in the audience may correct me if I get it wrong, but it referred to um, protests from people who did not want their uh, name or identity being um, revealed through Google searches going back beyond a certain point in time. And the, they asked the European Court to decide, uh, to, to make a ruling deciding that um, there would be a right to be forgotten uh, uh, beyond a certain point in history. Um, now, the problem with that is on one hand, it um, appealed to the sense of fairness of some people who were concerned about privacy of individuals, but then there were other points of view too from um, people in the, shall we say, national archives in different countries who said that anything that happens in the country which has gone into the historical record is a, a reflection of the truth about what happened, or at least uh, um, it may not be the truth, but at least the report of what is alleged to have happened is part of the historical record, and you cannot just delete that. And then um, uh, other people in the community in, in, at the meeting, original meeting in Taiwan said that, in fact, lawyers have not decided whether this right to be forgotten is, in fact, um, a good principle or not. So this is a question which we um, took offline at the meeting in Taiwan, and we had a private discussion to try and resolve that, and we could not entirely resolve it. So if you want to know a little bit more about what's happening in that, um, on that particular question, I would say go to the Dynamic Coalition on Publicness here this, after, uh, this morning at 12.30, 12 this afternoon, and 
one of the people involved in that dynamic coalition meeting at 12.30 is K.S. Park from Korea, who was one of the people at our regional Asia-Pacific meeting in Taiwan, and he was one of the people who was debating actively the question of the right to be forgotten. So that is a, a very specific example of a live issue which we have not resolved, nobody has resolved, uh, and it's still evolving. So in our synthesis document, we referred to it as an evolving issue. Okay? Thank you. Yes, please, in the front there. Uh, thank you. For the record, this is Mohammad Shabir from Pakistan. Uh, just uh, two points, uh, one comment and a question. Uh, first, uh, my comment is that we are talking about the dissemination of the information in the synthesis document. Uh, much has been said about it. Uh, my suggestion would be to expand upon the uh, suggestion that has been already s uh, explained by the Vashka, uh, that uh, at national level, perhaps uh, Vashkar, as uh, we know, he is at a very strategic position. He can pr probably, uh, within the community for persons with disabilities, he can organize certain seminar or conference where the information about the IGF and the processes can be disseminated. And this kind of organization uh, seminars can be organized uh, for the betterment of the, for the information of the community in other regional countries as well. Uh, as I remember that in 2015, uh, I, uh, with some other organizations and ISOC Asia Pacific Bureau, organized a workshop on web accessibility. This was a really hit. So such kind of workshops, I think, would be uh, more informative and proactive measure to organize in the regional countries. Uh, my question, uh, with the indulgence of the chair, I'm sorry if I'm taking the discussion a bit back, but I am really curious about uh, someone from the panelist mentioned that there were about 262 comments on the synthesis uh, document. I am wondering that what was the methodology that drafting group adopted to synthesize all those comments? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for your question. Um, Maureen, would you like to expand on that or would you like me to? Uh, okay. Um, on the overall uh, process of, of synthesizing the, the, the comments, so the 200 and, let me see, I think I said, uh, 261 comments we received this year is over a course of the three drafts that were put out for public comment. So it includes comments that came in during the open input period when we had a draft uh, framework document before the, before the meeting. Those comments were taken and uh, taken into account and also the workshops, the titles of the workshops, the themes of the workshops were taken into account. This was synthesized into the first draft zero which was available right before the APR GF meeting for participants uh, to look at. And as they go through the meeting each day, as Paul also mentioned, there is a town hall session plenary at the end of each day where people are able to comment on the text of the draft. People commented on the issues and the items that were discussed throughout the day. And all of these were also put online, which was the online commenting platform, which was open throughout the entire period for anyone and everyone at the meeting in person and also remotely uh, to, to input these uh, comments and inputs. Um, and maybe I'll pass to Maureen to explain how the, um, how the drafting committee did synthesize these comments. Thank you, Jen. Uh, Maureen, for the record. Uh, as uh, Jennifer mentioned, the, um, the document's online and it's actually sort of like organised according to the different um, themes. And as people commented, they commented on a particular theme anyway, so that uh, when uh, it came to the synthesising, the comments relating to a particular theme were actually assigned to the team that was going to, um, to be uh, looking at how they were going to mould a statement around the comments that were made. Um, th I think that too that it was sort of um, every um, now and again Jen would um, would incorporate um, incorporate uh, comments that were being made 
um, on a gradual, um, on, on a grab, uh, so like a, um, every, every so often, so that um, in the end we had quite a large, um, quite a large uh, sort of like uh, uh, statement, which, um, in, which had to be condensed because we didn't want to have a, a long, uh, you know, a long document. Yeah. So all the um, all the comments were sort of like merged into the document, and then that document was um, synthesised. Can I just uh, say I think I think there are two words of methodology, and that's transparency and consensus in producing that document. Thank you. Um, we have a remote question. Uh, this is Yanis from the Secretariat and speaking on behalf of Wakas. Uh, so he actually has a comment instead of a question, so I will just read it out. Uh, so, hi, I'm Wakas Hassan from Pakistan. I was an APRI Draft 2017 fellow and part of the Synthesis Document Committee. I would like to thank the community for their comments during the draft review process. I would also request more people to comment on the drafts in the next year, since these comments are main driving force behind the preparation of this document. Thank you. Thank you, Akas, for that comment. And of course, we always welcome more and more comments and public input from everybody participating, because without these comments and input, we cannot create something that is, you know, representative of the people and the discussions that happened at the APRGF meeting. Um, with that, I'd like to move on to the last uh, section of the um, discussion. Uh, back a little bit? Yes, thank you. So the applicability of the experience for IGF and NRIs. I think we've been talking a little bit about this already in the previous two sections, but I think I'd like to pass to chat maybe to talk a little bit about um, what APC is doing and why it matters to, or why the NRIs matter. Um, before that, uh, chat for the record. Before that, I think just in relation to applicability to the of experience for IGF and NRIs, maybe just two points coming out of discussion. And, and the one is, I think, in relation to the synthesis document that we have, um, I, I would say that we not to lose focus on the objective, which was the question earlier. If the ob our objective here, it's working, it really is working for our process, it is um, useful, mm -hmm. but, but perhaps, um, the how how it will be how it can be used is not necessarily I think for the APR IGF to look at but really for people to look at and see how they can use it. So I would say that should be a, the the guidance for us rather than a sort of add on to it in a process that is already working for us. So I, I think that that might be a good thing, either to to sort of like really hone the process much more for our purposes, and then I think to share it for others and see what they can take out from it. For example, an, an NRI or national process might look at it as a model for their own process. So long as, and as um, Paul was saying, so long as they know that it has to, there has to be transparency, there has to be commitment, and there has to be a process that accompanies it. I think that that, might, that would be my comment around applicability, to share the lessons, but not necessarily to change our process, mm -hmm. to add on more bells and whistles to it, because actually it's working for us. So that's the, the one comment. I, I guess for, for um, the other point around um, APC, I just wanted to um, also share with you that one of the things we did this year is to, you know, we, uh, APC has an annual um, publication and report on the Global Information Society, and the theme is national and regional um, IGFs. Um, and we have a report, in fact, for, the re for Asia, the Asia IGF, which is a pr very good report in some countries. Um, so you might be interested in that. And I think there's some lessons there. I, I, didn't re I haven't been able to read all the national reports, but I, I am pretty sure that in the other regions there are no synthesis document that, I, that mm. was recorded. There are different processes. So it, um, just to, to mention that, and if you're interested in the publication, um, I invite you to get a copy here as well. But there are some lessons there to be learned. Some of it would relate to the synthesis <coughs> document. Some of, some of it relates to processes that have been useful or have failed in. And I think we do learn quite a lot from failures as well. So that would be, that I think w is something that we can contribute to. Thanks. 
Thank you very much, Chan. Um, this is Jennifer from Secretariat, for the record. Um, on the screen, you can see actually three questions that we really want um, everybody in the room to take a look at. I do notice that we have uh, people from other national regional initiatives in this room, and maybe you can think a little bit about uh, what we were discussing today and, and how this really applies to, to your national situation as well. Um, perhaps I would read this also out loud for everyone's uh, benefit. So the three questions we wanted to pose is, do you think something like the APRGF synthesis document will help drive participation at your NRI? Do you think that the processes developed at APRGF provides a good framework for engaging broader participation on internet governance? Do you think the processes developed at APRGF can address issues of competing time and attention at IGF meetings. So um, perhaps if there's any thoughts um, from people up here who are discussants and also everybody here, um, part of the round table, um, if you have any thoughts on these questions, please feel free. If not, I think maybe I would like to just make a quick note about the last one. Um, as Paul did mention earlier and other uh, discussants around the room has mentioned, there's always this worry about um, competing time uh, and attention at IGF meetings. There's always parallel tracks, there's always parallel uh, workshops happening at the same time. I'm sure yourself this week has experienced the same thing. So having, uh, uh, balancing this um, with an outcomes or a synthesis document process, there needs to be some kind of balance to really uh, make sure we don't take away uh, time and attention from very good, very fruitful discussions happening at each separate workshop. Um, as for the processes developed at APRGF, um, I'm sure a lot of people have mentioned this as well. It is open and fluid. It's not really uh, uh, baked into any kind of, of set and formal process just yet. It is maturing over three years, but we have a lot to learn both from our community and the way they like to participate. Uh, we've heard a lot of uh, very, very good suggestions, especially to do with the dissemination of documents, and we've also heard some caution uh, regarding, you know, being cautious about how we don't push towards a, a, an outcome when something like uh, a competing or, or different opinions are, are actually uh, valid and heard during the discussions. And I think also very importantly, we need to make sure that the document uh, very faithfully represents what was discussed uh, during each APRGF meeting and, and not go uh, uh, too far into other issues that were not discussed by the participants at each meeting. Um, so maybe I would like to hear some concluding thoughts and comments um, from around the room. Um, Edmund, please. Uh, Edmund Chung here, sorry for not being here for the session exactly in terms of time uh, I had a conf conflicting session um, and and I think par uh, you probably covered this already but I think part of the, the part of the process is to uh, have a, a, a the input process uh, before the actual meeting as people are, are preparing for for the workshops as well uh, that that you know as they're preparing for the workshop actually they, they probably have a lot of thoughts in, in mind and that's a good uh, place and also uh, in in our process we we have the the the, the actual finalization of the the document after uh, the the actual meeting um, I guess uh, borrowing a, a little bit from from what the IETF does uh, the IETF never really makes a final decision at, at the actual meeting it's always you know then vetted through the the main list and, uh, and and further work um, so that to to address some of the the kind of live um, uh, uh, limitations of uh, of live discussions, although live discussions are very important, and a lot of the uh, most uh, dynamic and, and and most important discussions could be held uh, in live sessions, and, and that's you know kind of the uh, the the idea for 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 the process itself. Thank you. Izumi, please. Uh, thank you. Um, First, it's my apology not participating that much about the making this synthesis document. In part, I couldn't really stay long at the Bangkok's meeting. And so, um, having said that, maybe as what Jennifer said, that, that the content 
of the or, and the topics of this document is largely the reflection of the discussions we had at Bangkok, does not include s some other issues. That's fine on the one hand. On the other hand, maybe between the Bangkok and the, this IGF, there are other issues of our mutual interest or emerging issues. Just um, for example, as some of or many of you may have found that there are a lot of discussions this time about the AI. Of course, I, I myself had some question, how much internet governance issues do this AI really bring in? But then certainly, the, today's AI is very much the use of the internet or application or prominent application of the internet. And that is also for the blockchain and these areas are not really a traditional IZ issues. And by looking at the document, uh, we were pretty good in focusing on a very traditional human rights or access and very much is our region situation. But at the same time, um, going back to again AI, uh, <clears throat> there were one session by China, another from the Japanese government and the OECD yesterday that was very interesting and some others going on. And also the digital economy is one of the areas. So I would rather characterize this as very much a civil society-ish um, coverage of. We don't see that much technical areas either. So I wouldn't um, sort of strongly suggest to spend too much energy on these areas into the you know, final fine documents, but still might be interesting to take stock or list the areas of you know, issues that we wanted to discuss maybe but we couldn't or we will discuss in the next round. And so it's a more of a continuation of a kind. One uh, final question perhaps is that how much effect does this document have to the overall IGF um, policy formation, well not dialogue. Um, so it would be pretty good because we will have an NRI coordination session, for example, uh, this afternoon, and we'd like. And the, some other regions are not doing this as much as like this shape, but many other regions people are not really aware of even the existence of this document. So we may need to do some kind of outreach or dialogue with the other regions. That's another thing which I really felt interesting yesterday of the APC's uh, book launch of the GIS Watch where the NRIs are very much covered and the country report were very reflecting their, their status of the internet governance. And so with that I finish. Thank you very much, Izumi, for that question and suggestion and a lot of uh, food for thought, especially to do with, you know, thinking about intercessional continuation and also emerging issues between the end of the Bangkok meeting and the start of the global IGF and also looking forward to the, the next iteration of, of APR IGF uh, in 2018. Um, mindful of the time here, maybe we could do a, a quick concluding final thoughts. Oh, there's a... Uh, Edmund, please. Edmund here. Just quickly in response to Izumi, um, the, the synthesis document actually is the basis of uh, all our contributions to the NRI uh, sessions that are, uh, you know, spread across this, this time, the, the, the different main sessions and NRI sessions. So, so this, this forms our, our input there, um, but also, uh, you know, which is also part of the, I, I guess, the enhanced uh, cooperation part, which builds from the NRI. So that's, uh, this, this document is, not um, waved as in, you know, like a beacon, but it is the, the substance of which actually gets assimilated through, through the NRI sessions. Okay. Um, any more remote questions or comments? Uh, comments from the floor? If not, maybe I can call upon, oh, there is a remote comment, please. Uh, so this is a small, uh, this is a comment from Ying Ji Chen from Taiwan as well. Uh, so she is mentioning that when she reads uh, the synthesis document, so she feels that there is too much heavy burden to translate or digest to her government. So yeah, that, that's just a small comment.
Okay. Uh, thank you, everyone. I, th I think we're moving to concluding comments in the last uh, in the last five minutes. Um, look, I'd, I'd like to say um, my personal view is that I think the mode of cooperation, the mode of um, production of this um, uh, synthesis document, is something that. Um, has proven to be to be really powerful and, and very important for APRIGF, but it, it's also sort of coherent with the culture of APRIGF and the, of the way the MSG operates. It doesn't stand alone. It's really part of part of our overall event, uh, our overall culture of the event. And it kind of uh, recommends, it, it kind of uh, reflects, I think, as um, as Edmund mentioned, uh, the sort of old tradition of the internet uh, technical community, which is uh, characterized as a rough consensus and, uh, and running code. You know, what that involves is uh, a minimal, uh, transparent, cooperative process. Uh, it involves opting in, opt-in agreement by volunteers who are prepared to participate in, in the process of their own, of their own free will. Um, and in doing that to support the, the decisions and the products of the process, to the, to the extent that there's no serious disagreement uh, remaining. Um, and it doesn't involve formal representation. Uh, it doesn't require an, uh, unanimity of the, um, of the group. Um, and it's all done in a way that, which, as I said, is transparent, so everyone can see what's happening and what's being said, how it relates to the, how what's being said relates to the conclusions. And it's and it's very deliberatively consensus-based. So it goes on until until there's no serious disagreement, or, or as I mentioned before, in synthesis, the disagreements can be re can be represented without having to be to be resolved. It's very much you know, what rough consensus and, and running code is is all about. And I think that's a that's an interesting contrast with the IGF, with the MAG of the IGF and and its uh, other processes, um, which being such a, a much larger environment. Uh, is, is probably constrained to some extent, but I think it can be seen that uh, APR, IGF, and probably other NR, NRIs are, are able to be much more uh, nimble and evolutionary and, and more agile, if you like, in today's uh, trendy terminology than the, than the overall event. But I really would like to see the, the global event, you know, really taking, taking lessons from the, the regional events as well and, and improving some of the things that I think um, probably make the, make the um, make the global event less nimble and agile than it, than it really could or, or should be. Thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you, Jen. Um, I just wanted to make a comment. Uh, I forget who it was. Maybe Izumi uh, made a comment about um, the effect on, on other uh, national events. Um, it's my intention to report back both to IFLA, the, the International Federation of Library Associations, that I'm officially representing here, but I'm also officially representing Internet New Zealand, uh, who have um, supported my attendance at this um, at the uh, this IGF meeting, and I am going to feedback reports and um, discussions and take part in discussion sessions at uh, Internet New Zealand in their, you know, at their request in, from time to time. So there is a process agreed underway for me to feedback my personal views and other people from Internet New Zealand who were here this week have all, not, not in this room today, but uh, who have been here at other meetings and they will also be taking part in discussions. So there will be um, a process of cascading information down, whether it's actually pulling ideas out of the synthesis document is, is not quite the point. There is a process up and a process down. Uh, thank you. Maureen, for the record. Um, I just want to um, encourage all of you um, if to um, participate in our next APR IGF, which is going to be taking place in, in the Pacific, where my region, part of the region, and um, remembering that um, you know we do take into account um, the contributions that are made by people who are actually at the event or remote participants. So you're all invited. So just two things. I do think that it would be useful to actually document the process 
and the principles around it? Because I, we do say it's a synthesis document. It's actually more than that. And I, I guess if you want to share that experience, I do think that's very important. And that could impact also in terms of how, how the process are in other, in, you know, in other NRIs. The second thing is that I've got books for you. <laughs> Please come and pick them up, and we still have some in the booth. So this is the Global Information Society Watch that Izumi plugged for APC very nicely. So please come up and get copy. Um, so I just want to mention about like um, how uh, represent representative the synthesis document is when it comes to youth uh, sessions. Um, of course, uh, the things uh, when when we after we have sessions, some of the participants come and say, "Oh, so uh, the things that we say here, where is, where does it go?" or things like that. Of course, uh, for YIGF, we have reports, but uh, the things that they contribute to, for, for example, the APRGF sessions, they also want to see that somewhere. So I think uh, the synthesis document does uh, build this bridge between uh, the YFs, YGF sessions and uh, the APRGF sessions. Um, and with that, thank you so much, um, the whole room, for participating in the discussion. I think there were very good suggestions being made. I think the processes at APRGF is constantly learning and evolving and reflective of, of the community's uh, wish to, to put this forward. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to learn from other NRIs as well as they de develop processes uh, uh, surrounding something similar to this, or maybe we can learn from processes that are completely different to this. So thank you so much for your time and attention, and maybe a round of applause for everyone in the room. Can I just ask, is there anyone in the room who is not from Asia Pacific region? Can you raise your hand so we can see if we have an audience out there beyond our region? Anyone? Anyone from South America? Anyone from uh, North America? Yeah. Anyone from a um, um, Latin America? Uh, sorry, South America. Africa? Yeah. Okay, so we are slightly reaching a, a wider audience. Good.